course. <laughs> Uh, I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today talking to Michael Colling. Michael, hi. Hi, Yolande. Thanks for inviting me. So, Michael, uh, you've been working on a tool called Greenfoot. So, tell us, what, what is Greenfoot? Yes, Greenfoot is a programming environment that was designed for kids to learn programming, and specifically, in this case, it is object-oriented programming with Java, but the main aim actually is not so much to teach them the details of a particular language, but get them interested in programming, just excite them and draw them in. So our main target group is sort of high school age kids. Um, most of our users are sort of 14 years upwards, 14 to 20 or so. It's, it's used right to the end of high school, sometimes even a bit into university. Um, but the purpose of this, it's an environment that tries to make programming really creative and exciting and, and you know, to, to, to draw people in so that we can get kids into programming who would not otherwise have chosen to do programming. You know, it's to, to get the non-geeks a bit engaged. So what do they do with the tools? I mean, what kind of programs do they, do they um, write? It is mostly um, simple uh, computer games and simulations. So Greenfoot makes it really easy to create animated graphics on screen, sort of two-dimensional. It's a 2D graphics animation environment, um, so it makes it very easy to get uh, characters moving around. And then you're very quickly, of course, in the area of games um, or simulations. So we can do, um, on the simulation area, we have things like biology simulations, you know, ant colonies going around, or evacuation simulations of buildings, or um, some simple physics or astronomy simulations. That's sort of the more science side of things. And then on the gaming side, we can, of course, all sorts of typical, you know, we can, if you want to program Pac-Man or, or, you know, any of the side-scrolling jumping games. So those things are quite easy in, to do in Greenfoot, uh, where the students actually interact with objects. You know, they, they actually, without, we sort of sneak the lessons underneath. You know, they think they're programming a game, and we think we're teaching them object under programming. And it actually both is happening at the same time. The, the point is that the motivation often for them is just to make something, not to say, today we are learning about classes and objects. So uh, can they look at the code or do they just uh, yeah, deal the with the interface? Uh, no, it is, um, the coding is really um, traditional text-based Java programming. So once they um, manipulate their projects, they open an editor and it is a traditional standard text editor and they do write um, code as text, so it's not a drag and drop environment, but then the display is graphical and they can directly interact with the character. So once the program runs, um, the execution of the program is visualized because the characters actually move around on screen and you can stop it and you can open it up and every character on screen is an object and you can actually um, examine the fields in, in the object or you can interactively invoke methods on the objects as well if you want to experiment with it. So there is a lot more interaction going on, a lot more visualization than in traditional environments. But the coding um, is actually standard Java, text-based um, programming. That's why where the lower age limit comes in. So that's why we say we start at about 14 or sometimes 13 or so, because it is actually standard Java code that they're writing. And the syntax of Java is actually the, the lower boundary of how low you can go down in age with this. So, and can they access documentation or, I mean... Yeah, there is a, a extensive ecosystem around Greenfoot. So there, there's the software, of course, and the software is, is a free download. It's open source, free software. Um, but there are, is a lot of material surrounding Greenfoot and, and communities. So um, we have um, online tutorials in various forms. We have written online tutorials. There's also a tutorial video series that we've produced that is incredibly popular where... Um, we talk people through how to do things. Greenfoot is very much based, the whole design of the system is very much based on the assumption that you do not always have a teacher around who really knows what they're doing. Mm. The situation in many countries in schools is that the teachers are actually fairly ill-prepared themselves and need training themselves. So um, we have a lot of material that is designed for self-study and we have a lot of kids that learn programming through Greenfoot um, in their own bedroom or in an after-school club or in very informal settings. So. There are tutorials, video tutorials. There's also, if you want a bit more complete and formal instruction, there's a textbook. Um, and then there are two websites. One website 
for the kids, for the users. Um, so the Greenfoot website itself has a community section where people can publish their code straight onto websites. So from Greenfoot, when you've written a program, you can press a button and it publishes straight out onto the internet. Um, and the Greenfoot website, you can think about it as a like a kind of YouTube, YouTube for Greenfoot games. So it's a it's a public site where um, everyone can publish their material, and other people then can directly you know run the program in the web browser and comment on it. And there and there's a discussion section. So there's an extensive discussion of of teenagers about programming going on. It's very supportive, very and this whole infrastructure around it is very very important um, because it. it creates this social interaction. And then the second community is for instructors. There is another website called The Green Room, which is specifically for teachers and instructors. So that has a lot of material and project ideas and, um, and a bit more formal instructional material to be used in schools for various countries to fit various school systems in different countries. So we have actually a fairly extensive um, system around it. It's not just the software. The software is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Right. And do you have the software on different languages? Yeah, the it has been translated into quite a few different languages. I think the um, so natural languages for for different countries. Right. The interface is now um, available in I think eight or nine languages. Um, some of the European languages and Chinese and and um, of course the South Americans are always very proactive. So so Portuguese and Spanish is is there. Um, and the tutorials have been translated into some languages as well. So there are four or five languages that the tutorials are available in. Um, that um, It's an open source project, so we get that contributed from the community. We every now and then have volunteers who contribute a translation of the interface. Who in the community, will, um, do you have schools in the UK using the, the software? We have schools um, in the UK and all over the world, in fact. So at the moment, um, we don't have a full list of, of you know who uses it, but we know um, the green room, for example. The, everyone in the green room, everyone who's signed up there, is an instructor, and that is mostly school teachers. Some um, other uh, people having more informal instruction, like after-school clubs, and some university people as well. Um, and that uh, it's about two and a half thousand people who are signed up there at the moment. So that's essentially two and a half thousand institutions who are teaching it at the moment and then there will be more that we don't know about but that sort of gives us a rough indication um, so we know it is actually in, in extensive active use out there there is a real big community out there certainly when we you know uh, mess something up with our updates if, if we get bugs into our software we hear about it very very quickly um, uh, there is a very active community out there and people really care um, both the teachers and the kids. So there are these two separate groups. It's really fascinating to talk to them. You know, sometimes we talk to the kids and they get excited, and then we talk to the teachers um, or instructors. Um, and it's it is there's a lot of activity going on. So we are at the developer conference. What do developers are active in the uh, community as well? Or? Yes, that it's a it's actually very fascinating development in recent years. We had another system that we developed before in our research group that was called BlueJay, and with BlueJay, we always thought uh, about teaching programming at university level. The, the the target group was introductory university courses, and then with Greenfoot, at some some one day we we realized that introductory university is not anymore where the interesting stuff happens. Mm -hmm. you know, we always wanted to teach people early. We wanted to teach the, the beginning of programming. And that has moved down out of university. Uh, Ten years ago, fifteen years ago, that might have been introductory university for many people. But now all the exciting stuff happens much earlier. So we started Greenfoot as a reaction to that, as to, to get kids actually in their first contact with programming, to make that exciting and engaging. And the connection with the developer community is really fascinating because in recent years and just last two years or so a lot of software professionals have come up to us and said you know I want to do something in my daughter's school or something like that they, they go into that kids school and they say you know what they're doing there is just it's just dismal you know they're, they're just ruining computer science you know and it's something a lot of professional programs have said you know it's something that I like doing so much and and you know they're not doing it right I would like to go into my school and help them out and start something and help the teacher or start an after-school program club or or sometimes it's just I want to teach my own kid um, and so Greenfoot is really designed all the material and the software with a sort of much more informal setting in mind so that 
And we have a lot of interest from developers who just want to take it and teach a small group of kids in their local community. Um, it has become a very common pattern of use. Wonderful. Anything else you, want to, you would like to add to uh, where can people go online to find um, information? If you Google Greenfoot in one word, you will find it. So uh, you don't need to write down URLs right now. It's, it, it's, it's quite easy to find. It's the presence is, you know, has enough of a web presence that it's um, interesting. But the, I would just say, you know, if you are, you know, if you are some, you know, a young person who wants to learn programming, or if you are someone who wants to teach young people programming, just have a look at it. And we are very happy to talk to people as well. We do. We go around and do teacher training. We do regular workshops. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're not really quite sure how to get started, look at our material or look at the events that are coming up. We, we have various different workshops and presentations in different parts of the world. So get in contact and we are quite happy to help you get started. So your local, your next uh, workshop, when is it locally? Um, we have one um, in the UK here um, next month. So that is in, in April. Um, we have another one in June also in the UK. And we will do something at Java One in the US. Uh, we also, um, sometime I forget the date, sometime in July, we are doing something at a CSTA conference in Boston. CSTA, CSTA is the US um, Teachers Association, Computer Science Teachers Association. They are very active, and we go to their events um, regularly and do workshops, and that happens in different parts in the US. Um, we also have some Greenfoot hubs where other people do Greenfoot workshops in various parts of the world. So. Um, there, there are things happening that where you can year um, round basically. We we travel. We can't get everywhere. That's why we also have you know online material. Um, but we do travel a lot. Wonderful. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.